Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Lucas. Now in early 2025, there was a very famous Build Wars episode between Webflow and Lovable, right? There was a Webflow designer, his name was, his name is Brett, right? Um, basically uh, was competing against someone in the Lovable team. So as you can see, Brett from DesignJoy against this guy, Henrik, I think his name is. And they were basically in a countdown um, against each other to design a website. One was using Webflow, the other one was using Lovable. And now at the end of the competition, as many of you know, Brett from DesignJoy, AKA the Webflow guy, won, or he gave us a nice design, as you can see over here with a cool little gradient. He gave us like this nice text with these, you know, nice gradients inside the text. An overall very nice layout with nice colors. To be fair, I mean, I think he like made these images before the competition. So, and that's what kind of like made the design look nice. But anyways, Lovable also had their own website and it wasn't bad, right? We have this, you know, interactive 3D over here with this little robot guy that was kind of like interactive based on mouse hover. And then you can scroll down and let me see if I can find it. Yeah, you can scroll down and it had like, like a timeline kind of section but it wasn't nice. It had like this AI touch. And that's kind of what I get whenever I make something with something like Lovable, right? It looks like it's AI generated. But again, this happened back in March, 2025. Today, it is September, 2025. And you might be watching this in the future. So for you, it might be, you know, even different. But right now, September, 2025, tools like Lovable, tools like Bolt still have the same issue in my opinion, they still spit out very generic design. But in today's video, I wanna show you a tool where you can actually generate designs and these designs provide you with the same type of, you know, art direction control as a tool like Webflow would or like a tool like Framer would or, or Figma, but it actually uses AI to make your design alive, meaning responsive, interactive, have real functionality, where you can actually create designs that look like this, right? and combine them together and create interactive interfaces that actually work. So what does that mean, right? If I were to go over here and maybe select, for example, this one over here, I can scroll down and you can see that everything is interactive. And I can also remix this to kind of, you know, have like a more of a Shopify look or more of like an Ikea look or more of like a Walmart look. And before we actually dive into this topic, I'd love to invite you guys to my Discord server. We are a bunch of different startup founders, designers, developers from all around the world that get together every single weekday to talk about different tools, different topics in our industry, different challenges that we might be facing. So if you guys are joining, or if you guys are interested in joining the chat um, and joining these calls, please feel free to join the link. It's down in the description below. So if we go a little bit into this, you can see that we have this separate component, this separate component, and this separate component. And basically what we have is this, right? Uh, we have all of these separate components and we can basically bring them in together like a Lego. And here's a very nice example prompt. By the way, I'm gonna have this file um, in the description below for you guys just for free to copy and remix and use for your own. But this is pretty much the logic that you have to have in mind when creating your own type of custom custom component library. Now what you can do here is you can just double click anywhere and it basically opens a new component for you. And then what the cool thing here is that you can combine different things. So let's say we open this and we have the status bar. So we can say, let's add the at status bar at the top of the page. And then we can scroll over here and we say, okay, this is called screen time wid widget and the at screen time widget underneath, right? So once you do that, you click on enter and basically the AI starts to generate the design. And it's not just a design, it's the actual code. So it's basically like the actual finished code generated here as a prototype right here inside of an infinite canvas. So if you use something like Figma, for example, um, or something like, you know, Adobe Illustrator, you know, in most cases, just Figma, right? If you use something like that, it's mostly like vectors and shapes and all of this. But here, this is just pure code visualized as, as a front end. And so once we're done, we basically get what we asked for, right? We put in this first section and then we put in the second section. And this is kind of like the, you know, basic concept 
of using component libraries inside of Magic Path. Now let's say that you have this project that you want to kind of, that you're satisfied with, you created all the design inside of Magic Path, you can go ahead and click on this view code button up here and click on open in cursor, right? This is a very easy way to do it. You copy the full command, you open your terminal, right? And then you basically paste in this command inside of your terminal. You, you know, select the, the, the uh, location of where you wanna add your code. I'm just gonna leave it here. I'm gonna call this our design, click on enter. It's gonna start downloading our project and installing dependencies using yarn. And that's also how I kind of run the project inside of cursor. So click on enter where it says cursor. And as cursor starts to open, I'm just gonna go ahead and over here type yarn dev. And we basically get our project in, lo in the local host. And if I just move this a little bit, just to kind of preview the screen. And as you see, everything is working. We have our different pages. We have our little stories that are kind of interactive over here. We have our different releases or the little music over here. We can pause and play and click on the next one. And we have our different tabs over here as well. So yeah, guys, that's a pretty quick little video that I wanted to kind of show you guys today now in the wake of component libraries inside of Magic Path. Magic Path also gives you the ability to rapidly prototype code visually and then easily bring it into cursor. Let me know what you guys think about this. And if you have any other additional questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Join the Discord. We do these calls every single day. So if you're interested in that, you know, you're free to join. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye.